Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi my loves, it's Destin Choice and you're watching Choice TV. So for today's video, I really had to get on here and talk about the bad baby situation. So if y'all didn't know, Danielle Ravioli recently went on a podcast and she decided to basically blast the industry for doing a lot of heinous things to her. And she decided to blast her disgusting, filthy, the conniving snake mother for basically exploiting her and leaving her damn near broke. So as we all know, Bad Baby, also known as the Cash Me Outside Girl, also known as Danielle Ravioli, also known as a strong black woman, basically went on a podcast called the Emrata Podcast. And she basically discussed how the reason why she went the route of sex work and OnlyFans is because she was going broke. I, I mean, I don't know. I didn't really, I wasn't really thinking much of it at the time, but I was actually broke as fuck before I started OnlyFans. No way. Like... I was actually broke as fuck. Like, I barely had shit. Like, my mom my mom was in control of my money. So she was doing whatever she wanted to do. And I had a $500 limit on my card. No way. <laughs> yeah. And you'd already, like, Gucci flip-flops and, like, you'd had, like, hits. And you, you still haven't seen that money. So OnlyFans, in a lot of ways, was, like, you get to decide what you look like. You get to decide. It was like you a get whole, the money is like, walking you. through. Like I seen the light of the tunnel. Like, it which for me was a little bit of a shock because I'm like, um, you're Danielle Ravioli. You was on Doctor Phil. She literally had a platinum selling record. Even nominated alongside Nicki Minaj and Cardi B for best hip hop artist back in 2018. I have a little bit of a soft spot for Bad Baby because in this interview she also disclosed how she was even molested from ages three to six years old. And again, even during the time she was famous. And I don't, like, I was sexually abused as a child. Twice, actually. Two separate occasions. I'm so sorry. From when I was three to six, and then from when I was 13 to 16. The first thing I thought to myself was, how the hell did she get to a point where she was broke and she also was getting molested from the age of 13 to 16, when that's the age that she was famous? And the truth is, it all ties back to her trash ass mother who was not watching her, who was not supervising her, and used her just like all these other Hollywood parents do their other kids as a cash cow to fund their lifestyles. So they just send their kids off to do whatever the hell they want, and that's why these kids are traumatized and end up having no money because they're supporting their dumbass, immature ass parents. At first glance, a lot of us thought her mom was the innocent victim, the innocent, what was me, white woman who was in shambles with her ghetto, hoodlum ass, white girl daughter. But it was obvious that Danielle was the true victim who genuinely needed guidance and genuinely needed someone to be there for her and have her back, especially being an only child. I'm not eating this. She wants to say she's doing something so she can call me ungrateful at the end of the day. Growing up, we had respect for our parents. You're crazy. I'm here letting you live your dream, a once in a lifetime dream. I sit in this house while I let you go to the studio and do what you gotta do for your goal and for your career. I'm sorry, is my mother working in the studio every day? Is my mother doing rehearsals? Is my mother doing shows? You can do whatever the f you want. That's the crazy thing about this. You can go wherever the hell you want, be with whoever you want to be with, go do whatever you want to do. I don't care. You want a car? I will get you one. You want another house for you for me? I will get you two of them. I don't care if it's her money. I'm the boss. Just stop being so annoying and harping on the same Stop being so annoying or stop parenting. There's a difference. You don't get it. That's my job. You're 15. Job. Yeah, you don't run your own life. Now, again, she was doing big things, so I'm trying to figure out how that's even possible. Why isn't there a trust fund for this girl, you know? Why wasn't there some type of, like, percentage put away for her? You know, she had all these team members. She had these accountants. She had a whole entourage. She had a security guard. Why didn't anyone think to put aside money for her? And the reason is because her mom was signing all these contracts on her behalf and getting all this money funneled to her bank account while giving her daughter crumbs. And that's why she had to do sex work. She didn't even really have to do sex work, but she has a lifestyle that she has to maintain. And unfortunately, because her mom left her with nothing, just like how other child stars have parents that do the same thing, she had to find a way to have an escape plan. And her escape plan was OnlyFans. And, it, and it, it reminds me of an interview she did where she basically said that she told her accountant to make sure to have whatever money she made set off to the side on OnlyFans because she didn't have much to fall back on once she became an adult. Just make me enough to where I can get $3 million in an account and put it away and never touch it. Made way more money. 
recorded it. And we also can't forget about the time where she was left at a psychologically abusive boot camp thanks to Dr. Phil, and her mom, of course, allowed it. And she even said in her interview that if she has the opportunity to leave her mom in a nursing home, that's exactly what she's going to do when her mom gets old enough. How does your mom feel about your OnlyFans? Girl, that lady love money. She don't give a fuck where it come from. So you does she you do you support her still? Damn. And have you guys like talked about stuff with the teen whatever? Does she like realize what it was like? I think and- she feels bad, but at the same time, like it's like what can you do? Yeah. She knows she did ass wrong. I've seen there's so many TikToks about it, and they'll be like, just wait, talk about her in the nursing home. You're going. Wow. You're going. <laughs> You're like, uh huh. I went. I was also sent away mm-hmm. when it, you were too hard to I'm deal. I'm gonna tell with. them her ass got dementia. She can't have no phone. She can't have nothing. In general, Bad Baby did nothing but reveal how evil and nasty and slimy a lot of these Hollywood industry parents are. We see it all the time, where a lot of these Hollywood babies have their parents put them in the entertainment industry and basically use them as cash cows. And it really goes back to toxic, abusive, narcissistic, and manipulative parents who see it as just because they gave you life, even though you didn't ask to be here, they feel like you owe them everything. I'm always hearing horror stories about people who live with their parents, and their parents are always taking their money, left and right. Oh, that's my money. Give me my money. That's my money. Because they feel like because you they had you, that you owe them every bit of anything that you have. You know, they feel like your success is their success. They feel like anytime they brag about you, they're really bragging about the fact that you're an aesthetic to them. Jeanette McCurdy literally wrote a New York Times bestselling book exposing the fact that she's glad her mom is dead because her mom did nothing but make her feel insecure about her body. She suffered from all types of eating disorders because she always thought she was too fat because her mom was also her manager. And on the set of iCarly, her mom was forcing her to work even though she wasn't in the mood. Her mom was embarrassing her in front of the set and her mom was virtually exploiting her, making her do all types of interviews, do her hair a certain way, and it, she endured a lot of psychological abuse. Jeanette even did an interview last year making it clear that her mom squandered a lot of the money that she made because her mom wanted to fund her own personal lifestyle, because her mom had her own dreams of being an actress, and because her struggle acting career didn't work out, she forced her dreams on her daughter. Of, of how that worked. Right. Well, there's a thing called the Coogan account that actually takes or is supposed to take 15% of your money off the top and kind of put it into uh, the child's account so that they can have at least 15% of their money by the time they're 18 and uh, the rest of the money is kind of up for grabs. But uh, I got these papers for, that were saying that like the Coogan account information was never properly filed. I got that in my 20s. So that was kind of a little bit of a shock because I didn't, I, I just had, I, I really have no idea kind of what was happening. And, you know, my mom was in control of everything. So I, I, I don't think I ever saw the Coogan account money. Now, Jeanette McCurdy was right. There's laws to protect people like her because she's an actress that works for a union just like a lot of other actors and child stars. But then there's YouTube child stars and social media stars like Danielle Ravioli. You know, these influencers who are on YouTube and being exploited by their parents and their parents are making them do sad faces or making their or get, having their kids literally do a sad, pouty thumbnail during a tragic situ- situation. That's a broad example of why there needs to be more laws that protect children. Because at the end of the day, a lot of these minors, they aren't under a union. They have literally no protection. But their parents get to exploit them and get brand deals off of them and have them film content for hours and make them post for thumbnails. And then I wonder, are these kids going to have a college fund? Are these kids going to have an inheritance or a trust fund? You know what I mean? Like it's all fun and games when these parents are living in the moment and living off of the fact that people love their children's aesthetic but are these kids that are in these ace family videos and these child videos are they gonna you know these youtubers are they gonna have a a fucking financial cushion i always think about that because these people you know these children aren't protected so what's gonna happen to them in the next 10 20 years you know i feel like a lot of them are gonna one day come forth and do a whole documentary exposing their families or exposing their relatives for exploiting them in vlogs and challenges and shit Then there was Joe Jackson's dusty ass. As we all know, Joe Jackson was Michael Jackson's father, and he was known for being ridiculously abusive, beating the hell out of all of his children. He even thought it was okay to bully his children, making fun of their appearances, making fun of their noses, causing them to develop internalized insecurities. Then it got to a point where Joe Jackson tried to milk them for as much as he could because he was responsible for a lot of their success. 
just for him to eventually get fired by Michael Jackson, who was one of the only ones that first stood up to him and took control of his own career back in 1983, which his siblings eventually followed suit and did the exact same thing. Then let's talk about Gary Coleman. Now, Gary Coleman is a whole other video than himself. And let me start out by saying that Gary Coleman's parents are going to hell in a handbasket for what the fuck they did to his wealth. I'm pretty sure most of y'all know who Gary Coleman is. He was the boy that did the whole, what you talking about, Willis? You know, the whole different stroke show. He was a huge, successful actor back then. You know, he was a massive star. You know, you couldn't go anywhere without seeing his face back in the late 70s and early 80s. And even in the 90s, he was still a big deal. But unfortunately, Gary Coleman had a horrible, horrible, horrible life once he became an adult. First things first, Gary Coleman's adopted parents that pretty much adopted him when he was like two years old stole all his fucking money and he was left broke in his adulthood. Now, if y'all didn't know, Gary Coleman was in a very public lawsuit that made headlines back in 1989 where once he turned 21, he found out that he had no trust fund compared to what he should have had. So Gary Coleman should have had at least $18 million in his trust fund Come to find out, he only had like $200,000 in his trust fund because his parents were pocketing his money. And of course, Gary Coleman did suffer from severe health issues because y'all gotta remember, Gary Coleman was only short and small because he had severe health issues. Gary Coleman had a lot of issues with his kidneys, which prevented him from growing past four foot seven. On top of that, please remember that Gary Coleman had two kidney transplants by the time he was 17 years old so add on stress on top of already having health issues on top of the fact that his own parents basically robbed him now arsenio hall being as messy as he was back then playfully made a joke about gary coleman's finances and he basically tried to dig deeper during the trial of gary coleman suing his parents for squandering his trust fund and he playfully asked Gary Coleman how much was he making and how much was he able to invest with his money he was making like like a billion an episode or something right how, how much money were you making oh well it's around seventy thousand dollars then but I don't know yeah, seventy thousand dollars an episode yeah well I mean that was then you know but you invested well right well, I invest in different areas. I, you know, I, I'm looking to stay in the industry. I don't want to quit. I mean, maybe one day I'd like to retire, but I enjoy making people laugh, so I'm not going to give that up. Now, his dusty-ass parents did address it, and they did address the fact that they squandered his wealth. And when they were grilled about it in an interview several years later, this is basically what they did to gaslight the situation. After all, like I said, when Gary turned 18 years old, we was, you know how you do a horse? We were put out of the pasture, mm -hmm. okay? And so Gary took on a whole new branch of uh, individuals that wanted to manage his career and also manage his money. So like I said before, what we, as a final figure, we turned over to him. What happened then, I don't know, but for us, the case, you know, that we put some in laws, you know what that was all about? Yeah, you know, I explained to you. That was about a balloon, you know, a bond that we had set aside in case Gary had a guy kidnapped. You know, okay, that's how that all come about. We had nothing to, you know, to give up. You know, you know, we had nothing, you know. We left California. Everything, I, I everything we had, everything yeah. we had, like for instance, our pension plan that we had accumulated by working for Gary, you know, everything. I even had to sell my Abbott stock, which was 7,000 shares, and also my Baxter stock, which was 3,000 shares, in order to try to maintain and keep afloat. Yes, but I understand what you're saying. I'm just wondering why you didn't go on television to defend yourselves, because people were throwing a lot of bad accusations. <laughs> you heard Todd Bridges, and uh, I mean, the, the conventional wisdom for many years was that he was estranged from his parents because they, they stole his money, they mismanaged his money. And I, well, no one ever heard from you. <laughs> You know, we didn't really have anything to defend ourselves from. We did not take anything from so Gary, you, and, he, and he knew that, and we didn't need to go on television uh -huh. and say, I say, you know, we didn't or we did His parents were using that money, gambling it away, wasting it on food, wasting it on vacations, wasting it on themselves, and they virtually burnt through all his money, and then he ended up suing them in the 1980s. Now, unfortunately, the case didn't get settled until 1993, and he only got a settlement of $1 million. But Gary Coleman's situation is a whole other video within itself. I also want to address the fact that back in the late 90s and early 2000s, Gary Coleman was in so many horrible commercials because he needed the money. 
20 years ago, I made millions and millions on TV. The sad part is the people who took care of the money spent it. Recently, I needed some cash fast. I saw a commercial for cash called and called 866-590-CASH. $10,000 was in my account the next day. I had some cholesterol by using I can't believe it's not butter spread on my favorite foods. Trust me, knowing about living a healthier lifestyle makes for a kinder, gentler Gary. Yes, ma'am. Shall I make this out to you? Come play against Gary during a live hour-long round of the Now You Know Better game. Not only do you get to spend some time with Gary, but you'll also get a chance to win a million-dollar annuity. I'm Gary Coleman, and now I know better. So he was damn near doing every commercial you could think of. He was out here doing food commercials, butter commercials, all types of stuff because he was trying to recuperate what his parents basically stole from him. And on top of that, he was struggling with health issues, which caused him to go down a really dark path. And again, Gary Coleman's situation is a whole other video, but Gary Coleman was known for also being very mean to people because he would oftentimes get antagonized by interviewers. People on the street would pick at him, say slick shit to him. You know, he started having to work a regular job because he couldn't afford his expenses. You know, he was losing his hair. His skin was depleting horribly. You know, Gary Coleman lived a very hard life. Gary's mugshot. Arrested and booked last month, Gary joined the panel to tell his side of the story. But watch when he and guest panelist, attorney Lisa Bloom, go at it. You know what? If people would want to believe that I assault my wife at four foot seven and she's five foot six, then they can believe that all day long. I don't care. Well, why don't you flat out deny it then, right here? Because otherwise, everyone's going to look at this and say he's waffling around and he probably did it. I don't waffle. There is no abuse that goes on in my house. I don't waffle. Now, if people believe that I'm waffling, then they can go do what they Did need to do. Did you abuse your wife? Did you abuse her? Did you lay your hand and on her? And you know what? You can go the same place. Did you lay you your hands on your wife, Gary Coleman? Because she says you did. And drown yourself in the ocean. She says you did. You know what? I have this on my head because I fell down the stairs. I don't want people thinking that my wife is abusing me. Why don't me. you want to answer the question about whether you abused because your you wife? Because you can go and yourself. everything else. Pardon me? You can go yourself. Really? And quit asking Is that me. the way you talk to your wife? Yes, I have to, if I need to, but I don't. Is and I don't know you, and I don't care about and you. And is this the kind and of anger that leads to your physical assault? Doesn't matter to me. Let me tell you so what I'm going to ask you to do. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Or get Listen. hit by a bus tonight. Hey, hey, I'm hey. not going to care because she's pushing my buttons, and I don't like her now. And the next thing Why I'm going to do tonight? is leave. So f all of you. Gary, come back. No, f you. Then he had a habit of being violent because people would pick at him, you know, even when he was at work. You know, Gary Coleman had to get a nine to five job because acting wasn't paying the bills anymore. The little bit of money he was making from commercials was adding up and he constantly couldn't afford his expenses. You know, he was even spotted working his security job. He was even famously mocked by Dave Chappelle for working as a, as a, as a security guard. You know, this was a big deal back in the 2000s. I am fighting crime, okay? Chuck your pockets. Oh, oh. I, I died. Yeah. I, I'm charging you with shoplifting, miss. You dick! You, you planted those on me! What you talking about, bitch? <laughs> and just to add insult to injury, Gary Coleman also passed away at the age of 42 back in 2010. And it was a big deal because, of course, he was in a crazy estate battle with his ex-wives. And that's a whole other video within itself. But Gary Coleman famously left his parents nothing in his will. He left him he left his parents squat. He left them nothing and he hasn't necessarily talked to his parents since he was in his 20s. So he virtually cut his parents off for putting him through more hardship. Now on top of that, Gary Coleman also didn't even like being famous. Where if someone had told me that uh, my life would have been like this early enough where I could have got out, I would have got out. I said, "Ah, oh, no. You know, I want to really? go and have a normal life." And have friends. What it said, you, the hell with the show business career yeah, and all of that stuff. Yeah, it, it's a half kid because I still think about that. That's something that I fantasize about because now we, now here we are in 1993. I'm 25 years old. I'm a well, a world renowned celebrity. There's no place I can go where no one doesn't know me. We all know that when people become child stars, that's virtually the end of their career once they become adults. Like once you're a, once you're a child to an adult, people are not going to take you seriously. People are going to always see you 
as that child star, and it's going to be hard to break that mold. You know, Parker McKenna, like little Katie from My and Kids, you know, she is a good example. You know, she struggled to find a lot of work in Hollywood because she's little Katie from My and Kids. You know, she's not the best actress. You don't really see her that often anymore. And now she's doing these low-budget, raggedy-ass Tubi films that we don't really care or are checking for. So Parker McKenna is a great example. So it's really scary how evil the entertainment industry is and how they really prey on children. And the fact that it really be your own family makes things even worse. The fact that Jeanette McCurdy was struggling from abuse with her mother, making her have eating disorders by talking about her body all the time and using her as a cash cow. The fact that Bad Baby was out here being told that she only had a $500 limit on her card and her mom ran everything and ran through all the funds she made with her music career. And then the fact that bad baby also even came out recently and said that she was molested when she was like 13 to 16. And I don't like, I was sexually abused as a child twice, actually, two separate occasions. I'm so sorry. From when I was three to six, and then from when I was 13 to 16. Which is around the time that she got famous. And it's crazy how kids aren't even being preyed on by their parents through finances. Kids are also being thrown off and fed to the wolves because these parents are so irresponsible that they're giving these kids to any and everybody. You know, look at Aaliyah. Aaliyah was literally given off to R. Kelly and all these major executive producers because her parents thought that she was going to be big and rich and fund their lifestyle. And they wanted to let her go out there and be grown that they didn't supervise her. And look what happened to Aaliyah's mental health. You know, not even just Aaliyah. Let's also talk about Todd Bridges. So Todd Bridges was a co-star for Gary Coleman and he came out a couple years ago and said that he was actually molested by one of his one of his team members when he was a child well i was 12 years old and my publicist he um basically uh got talked me into doing things that i didn't really want to do i was hadn't had sex before and he kind of convinced me that this was the right thing to do and um kind of told me like don't tell your parents you know and uh, he bought me a bicycle he always kept doing things for me that I didn't quite really understand. So we kind of seduced uh, he started, you. I started at 11. Yeah, he, he seduced me. And he started at 11 years old to 12. And then finally one day um, at 12 years old, some an encounter with Dana Plato happened. And I realized that that was the right thing and what he did was the wrong thing. And when he came to my house the next day, I attacked him. Hmm. My mother knew right away what had happened. And uh, my mother went after him. My dad stopped him. And my dad took his side and then didn't, didn't believe me. Wait, wait, wait. And, your, uh, dad, wait, wait, wait. That, your dad took his side. He didn't my, believe his own son. Yeah, because, no, my dad, the guy had did it. Predators are very smart. They had set me, he set my father up to know that I was going to say something eventually. And he got in my father's ear and made my father, you know, told him that I was going to say something. And, and that it was all a lie. Mm -hmm. And so when I had told my father, my father told my mom that I was lying. And my mom knew I wasn't lying because she could see in her child's face because it happened to her when she was growing up mm. that I wasn't lying. And I just attacked the guy. And then after that, the guy stalked me for like two years. And that's when they had no stalking laws. You know, everywhere I went, that guy was still there. But see, the, the, the problem that we have to do is we have to figure out, you know, this bill was, was shot down in 2006. And, right. and, and we've got to get this bill passed. We have to make people realize that children need to be safe on these sets. And they're not safe because parents want their kids to be in show business so bad that they were willing to do anything. They'll send them off with strange people. You know, Todd, that's we something talk that you just shouldn't do. When, when a child is molested, for me, I can't speak for every other child, but when I was molested, it made me feel shame, degradation, uh, made me feel less than average. I mean, I, I, I spent uh, uh, from, from 12 to 13 years old trying to figure out whether I was homosexual or not. I didn't know because, mm. that, because I liked the feeling, but I didn't know that that was wrong, mm. you know? So, you know, if I can keep any child from having to go through what I went through, by having these people get these background checks before you become a publicist, before you become a, uh, a manager, you know, you have to have these background checks before you get around these minors in show business because it's like show business is an open field to I, child molesters. And I'm not going to lie, most of us who probably grew up in this era of watching these TV shows probably thought to ourselves that they were living large, making money, traveling the world. Some of us probably even wanted to be child stars at some point. I know I did because I saw how great these kids were living. I thought they were doing so amazing. Come to find out, they were actually being abused and tortured. You know, it's only very few of them that were actually doing well and had great parents and had a great social dynamic around them. 
And of course, we know about the story of Britney Spears, or at least the gist of it, where basically she wanted to be in the entertainment industry, and then she got to a point where she was being exploited by her own father and her management, who forced her to do things that she didn't want to do, made her over-sexualize herself, and even got to a point where they were pressuring her to do shows and performances and sign deals that she didn't want to do because she wasn't even in control of her full finances. Then we can also talk about Cole Sprouse. You know, Cole Sprouse addressed the fact that his mother only put them in the entertainment industry because she needed to make some money parents explain to you as to like why you were auditioning so young well my mother needed an income mm -hmm. i mean there's two I, I think there's two types of kids within you know the child acting business there's like the thespian children that choose to do it and then there's the working class kids that mm -hmm. that in our case at least um twins are a great labor exploit because babies can only work for a certain amount of hours, so you double the time if you have two of them that look identical. Because a lot of these parents realistically are looking for a retirement fund. It's obviously expected for parents to make sacrifices for their children, especially if you chose to have them. But realistically, there's oftentimes an imbalance of power and an imbalance of boundaries when a lot of parents feel entitled to squander somebody's wealth. You know, especially Gary Coleman's parents, who I'm still to this day disgusted by their response. But it's not just Gary Coleman's parents that still feel like they're entitled to their children's finances. It's so many other parents to successful children that feel entitled to their children's success. You know, let's talk about Rihanna's dad for a second. A little bit before the pandemic, Rihanna found out that her dad started a talent agency called Fenty Entertainment. Even though Rihanna had already trademarked her last name many years ago before she started her beauty and lingerie line. Well, come to find out her dad was falsifying things to make it seem like he was representing her and that he was affiliated with her just to promote his talent agency, which is really unfortunate because Rihanna tried to handle things behind the scenes. She sent multiple cease and desist, but of course her father wouldn't comply. So she eventually got to a point where she had to take legal action and she did eventually settle things behind the scenes. But that's just a good example of why her dad felt so entitled to use her name and legacy. So it's a good example of why you need to put up boundaries against anyone and never let anyone squander your wealth and ne never let anyone feel entitled to things that you worked for. So I get why a lot of these celebrity kids grow up and they go fucking insane or why they separate themselves from their parents or go on an expose tirade exposing their parents because you really see how evil and disgusting and how malicious people can get when they're struggling financially and they feel like they're owed something by other people it kind of reminds me when a lot of their when a lot of parents in this generation and even in most generations i'm not gonna say this generation pressure and force their kids to go to college to pursue a certain career just so they can brag about their kid being a doctor, just so they can brag about their kid being an engineer, or just so they can brag about their kid being a lawyer. Just so that they can use their kids as a retirement fund. That's a common thing where a lot of parents will psychologically abuse their kids, make their kids think that you owe me now because I had you and I gave you life, even though it was your fucking job to raise a kid because you chose to have a kid. And now... They put these kids in this predicament where they feel like they have to be their parents' retirement fund. I have to take care of them even though I don't want to or it's draining or I'm going broke giving my parents all my fucking money. And I feel like I have to give them my fucking money because, you know, they take care of me. They gave me life. So I should do this. When that just... When that's just societal and generational brainwashing and generational conditioning, where you feel like you have to constantly give your parents a whole bunch of fucking money, even though it's sucking you dry and sucking the life out of you, when you don't owe your parents shit. Give your parents respect, but as far as being an adult, it is not your responsibility because your parents could have easily got a retirement fund, your parents could have easily invested for the future, or your parents could have simply had no fucking kids. But of course, a lot of parents make their kids feel guilty, and that's probably why Gary Coleman for such a long time decided that it was okay because it wasn't until he was in his 20s where he decided to sue his parents. He been knew he was running out of money when he fucking turned 18, but it was the fact that he wanted to be there and support his parents, and he unfortunately had to cut ties with them. Then there's Bad Baby, who also made it ab abundantly clear that when her mom is old enough, she's taking her mom right to that nursing home. And this is why, looking back, I'm kind of, you know, glad that I never got into the entertainment industry, you know, as a child or never got into the whole modeling world. Because I can imagine all the Me Too stories I would hear from all these quote-unquote children who were out here being their parents' cash cows. Because being in the entertainment industry as a child is really scary because, again, these children are vulnerable. They don't have a sense of self. They don't know how to say no or call things out. You know, I can do a whole fucking one-hour video about all the people who 
became big superstars who were molested and taken advantage of or went to those hotel rooms when they were little kids to pretty much rise and elevate in their career. Especially the little, especially all the young teenage girls that were in these music videos being video vixens, but that's another video within itself. But I was out for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys can see where I'm coming from. And overall, please let me know about what you, what you think about Danielle Ravioli, what you think about the whole Hollywood industry, preying on children, and the fact that a lot of these children nowadays want to be famous, want to be entertainers, want to be on the forefront because they think it's going to change their life and make their parents rich. But overall, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Give your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And yeah, that's that. Choice out this bitch. That's all you get for free.